I'm Matt Langford and I sculpted the uh, statue of Mary Draper Ingalls outside of the Boone County Main Library. Second grade, I remember being given a lump of clay and I, in my mind's eye I could see so clearly what I wanted to make which was a turtle for some odd reason. And I could just see this turtle. I was gonna make the best turtle in the world. And what I ended up with was a mound of mashed potatoes with a lump and four posts. And I still have it in the studio as a reminder of, you know, what you have in your mind is not so easily generated by your hands. That takes discipline and craft and time. You know, there's an old saying, I don't know who said it first, but I'll borrow it, which is, uh, art is good therapy for neurotics. And I'm joking, so don't, don't worry too much. But uh, all kidding aside, it, it's just therapeutic. I think people are, 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 some people have to work with their hands. I take no satisfaction in anything that where my hands aren't occupied. I went to NKU, but I'm largely self-taught. I did uh, get a degree in art from Northern. I studied design, I studied many disciplines that I use uh, as a part of my process. But much of what I learned early on, in my early 20s, was, was caught peeking over the shoulder of Mike Scope. So I like to give him credit. I should say I made a living for 20 years uh, sculpting in the toy industry. So that's a dirty little secret, but that's how I made my money for Hasbro and Mattel and Disney and uh, all, all the uh, toy groups. Originally, the library did approach me. Um, I had planted some seeds there years before at an art show saying, if you do build this new library, establish for yourself the mindset that you're going to have a piece of public art in tandem with it. Do that ahead of time, plan on it, you know, make it part of the architectural plan and I don't care if it's my work or someone else's. A year or two later, I get a call from uh, the director of the library, um, and she says, well, we're going to have a statue, and we'd like you to do it. And uh, at that time, it was going to be uh, Daniel Boone, which made sense for Boone County. But I had already read the book, Follow the River, about Mary Ingalls, Mary Draper Ingalls, and um, I had already in my mind sketched out, in fact, I have a sketchbook with an image of a rudimentary idea of a monument, which fleshed out, became very similar to what I actually produced. Uh, so I pitched that. I said, yes, I'll be happy to do Daniel Boone. But before we launch on this, consider a heroine that in some ways Boone County owns, to some degree, at least the, the, the history took place in Boone County. The story is tied well to the uh, literature through James Alexander Tom's book, Follow the River. They decided maybe Mary was a better fit, so that's how that came to be. Um, so I didn't want it dramatic and, and, and overly, um, in art terms, mannerist. Um, I wanted something that was more internal, that point of no return. I knew that early on. That's, that's the first impulse I had when I read the book, was that sense of the, 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 the real turning point, that point of no return. When you make the decision that you're going into the unknown, and the point at which you get into the unknown so far that you cannot return to safety. And that's the point I wanted to portray. And it was real tricky because to portray a woman takes a certain level of sensitivity as an artist but to, to flatter without um, patronizing, but also uh, to portray a woman in hard circumstances without creating a harsh woman. That was, I knew, I knew that would be a challenge. So again, all of these things go into the think tank 
Um, I also wanted, since I know that the family, um, yeah, there are many descendants of Mary Ingalls in the region, let's just say in, in the Midwest and, and uh, Virginia and Kentucky and Indiana and others. And that family has a sense, a strong sense of ownership of their legacy, her legacy. And so I thought it would be nice if I could incorporate some aspects of her appearance and draw that from a descendant. And uh, so she's an archetype, you know, not a portrait. I don't know what Mary looked like directly, but she's archetypal as in she fits the mold. But also, I did take literal measurements from the frame of, uh, of uh, Patty Hans, who is uh, one of the descendants, one of the great, 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 great grand elders. So I essentially create a steel skeleton that is welded in agreement with the points of articulation of the figure. Uh, and then I flesh that out with foam, you know, panel foam that's then sandwiched over the skeleton. And then, so you have a rigid skeleton. Now it's beginning to flesh out with, uh, with uh, a foam core. And over top of that foam core, uh, you can paint or apply clay and then that becomes your initial coat and from there you begin building up your forms with uh, traditional modeling. So that creates what is, when the clay is finished, that creates what would be called the pattern. You know, what, what people would call a clay statue is, is the pattern from which a mold will be made. From the mold, waxes are poured. The waxes become um, the pattern that actually eventually becomes bronze. So you have an outer shell that is ceramic, you have the wax on the inside of that, and then you have a ceramic coat. That wax is then burned out, and the two shells, the inner and the outer, are then um, removed from uh, the heat that burned out the wax, and uh, eventually molten bronze is poured into the void that was left by the wax. So it's called the lost wax method. And then it's a matter of extracting the bronze from the uh, investment uh, um, jacket and, and that comes down to uh, hydraulic tools or hammer and chisel, just break it off and pick out the core. And so then you, uh, the castings are done in sections. So you'll get head, torso, arms, feet, legs, base. All of these are separate cast sections that are uh, essentially become a jigsaw that then is reassembled. And I always thought it would be really nice if we could also uh, place uh, a statue in uh, Virginia where she returned. They're a small community with many of the Ingalls uh, clan. Uh, in fact, the original uh, farmstead is still active there, Ingalls Ferry. Uh, Bud Jeffries is a, a descendant uh, of uh, Mary's. and. Uh, he and the community were really hopeful to be able to buy a second casting. And over the years, they started a fun drive, and it does sometimes take uh, a few years for these things to get off the ground. And eventually, it was, it was um, successful. And so just the, oh gosh, time flies so fast, but I think it was this past October, we, we placed the, the second Mary in, in Radford, Virginia. So Mary has returned home and I'm pleased with that. Mm -hmm.